let's talk about how we identify threads. We have the first number, which is on the bottom here, it's diameter measured by the male portion of the threads, not the female portion, which would be a nut. This would be the bolt. This diameter here, let's say this is three eighths of an inch, okay? That would be the first number of a thread. The second number is its pitch. And this can be expressed in one of two ways, depending on whether or not it's metric or standard. So I'm just gonna call it three eighths by 24, okay. In metric, we have a bunch of threads, but the only thing we care about is the distance from one thread to the next. Kind of like a wave, that would be its wavelength as opposed to its frequency. And in upcoming examples, it'll be 1.5 millimeters, okay? That would be 1.5 just as a random example, it could be a whole host of numbers. And we'll find that certain numbers, certain pitches are common with its overall diameter. Like this would be a 10 by 1.5, okay? And SAE, or Imperial, it goes by its frequency rather than its wavelength. So we were, so let's say this was one inch. We would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be eight T P I. That would be its pitch. Both are called pitches. They're just expressed differently. That's the only thing. And in inches, we can also, if let's say we wanted to find the actual number of how far two are apart, it's really simple. Just type in a calculator, one over eight in this example, which would equal 0 0.125. 24, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but let's say 20 equals 0 0.05, all right? Pretty simple. And that is how threads are expressed. Let's focus on some threading theory. Uh, these are some really basic rules that actually work really well. Um, they're not the absolute perfect model to go by, but they work, you know, 99% of the way there. And it's good enough for, you know, the average home machinist. Um, so there's a couple things you're gonna need to know in threading. We need to know what the outer diameter is gonna be uh, for a bolt. And that's pretty obvious. Uh, if you're doing a 10 millimeter by 1.5, the outer diameter of the bolt is going to be 10 millimeters. Let's say you're doing the nut. Um, what should the inner diameter be? And that's called your minor diameter. It's real basic. So we got 10. Uh, we got 10 mm minus your pitch, which would be 1.5 in this case. So your this hole would be 8.5 mm. M. Uh, real basic. If it's if it's a uh, imperial, um, let's say it's three is twenty four. It's going to be point three seven five minus one over twenty four. I don't know what that number is, but you can calculate that in a calculator if you want. The next thing we're going to want to know is how deep. To make our threads and a thread is basically a triangle you got your cutter which is 60 degrees and it's an equilateral triangle this is also 60 degrees and this is 60 degrees and by that we know that each one of these sides is equal and this measurement here is our pitch just like so and that also means that this equals that, and this equals that. So if we know our pitch, we know all the sides of the triangle. All right, and this is gonna be some basic trigonometry. It's really simple. Uh, I said the, a curse word to some of you, but we got our formula. So that's one, K 
Ka. And then we got our Toa. And this applies to triangles to find the various sides, the lengths or the angle if you want. So what this represents is sine of the angle, which is represented by theta, equals O over H. All right, and this one is cosine theta equals A over H. And then tan theta equals O over A. All right, we can use those formulas to figure out more than just threads, but these are very useful in fabricating and machining. Um, if you don't know these, I recommend that you learn them. They're really easy. It's just, you don't need to know these formulas. You need a calculator and you need to know the basic, real simple algebra. All right. So this triangle here, uh, we can represent it in another way here because it's symmetrical. We know that this is 60. We know that this length is our pitch. And in this triangle, we can recognize that this is the hypotenuse. It's the longest side, okay? We have our 60 degrees. Which one do we sign op or adjacent or opposite? Opposite is the one that really isn't touching our angle. It's this one, it's O. Adjacent is that one, all right? So we'll go back to our formula. We got sine 60 degrees equals our O is the one we want, want to find out because that's our depth over H, all right? Uh, if you were to type sine 60, and it's always going to be 60 unless you're doing a really weird threat, it's going to equal 0.866. If you were to type that in the calculator, I can do it right now. On uh, We're sine, sine 60, all right. 0.866025. All right, that's close enough for us. Equals, we're doing an M10 by one and a half thread. So this pitch is 1.5 millimeters. If we were doing uh, imperial, we would have to do the fraction and calculate a decimal equivalent of that. So we're going to do O, which we don't know, and that's what we want to find out, over 1.5. All right. How do we get rid of this 1.5? We gotta multiply this whole system by 1.5, apply the same thing to this side, 1.5, all right? And then this will cancel out and we'll get 1.5 multiplied by 0.866 equals O. And we'll type that into the calculator. Uh, 1.5 multiplied by 0.866. Oh, I missed a number. 1.5 multiplied by 0.866, and we get the number 1.299. So our O equals 1.299. If we want to figure that out in inches, we're going to multiply that by, or divide by 25.4, because there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. And that gives us 51.1 thousandths. So, 0.051. And I want to know that because I'm using a, an imperial machine. And that is how you calculate the depth. Your O. It's not exactly perfect. It's pretty close. If you were to look at all the formulas of threads, like the actual real, real formula on how to calculate this, it's way more complicated. And you're talking maybe a thousandth different. Uh, you got little root you know, little roots that you avoid. And it, it we don't really need to be concerned with that because all we're really interested in is getting a, a nut to fit a bolt. All right. And one little uh, thing that we can infer from what we just did, we have our, our threads on the side of a bolt, like so. And we have this, this is our diameter, D. All right. What affects the depth of your threads? Is it the diameter D? No, it's the pitch. So 
when we calculate our threads, we do not care about what D is. It's always just going to be a function of the pitch. So if it's, you know, one quarter by 20, our pitch is 20, which is equals 0 0.05. If this was a 3 eighths by 20, it does not matter what D is, it's still going to be 0 0.05 for the pitch. And that's also going to be our 0.866 multiplied by 0 0.05 will give us our answer as to how tall this is. When we made that calculation for our depth of cut, remember that is just a guideline, okay? We ultimately want to test it out on what we plan on threading onto it. And if you have, if you're making both parts, uh, the first part you can make 51 thousandths and the mating part, you're going to test that part. All right. Once you make the second one, but I don't exactly know what the factory did in terms of cutting this, this, these threads. This is also an M10 by one and a half. Um, this not made, could have been made to fit real sloppy. You know, it may me because the manufacturer doesn't know what this is going on. So they might have intended to make this as loose as possible so it'll fit every one and a half that, uh, that it comes across. All right. So as we get up to our 51 thousandths, we want to make sure that uh, if we go too far, it's going to be real sloppy. It's, you're going to put it on there and screw it on. It's going to have a lot of wiggle. We don't want that. So don't go all the way to the 51 thousandths. Let's try it 38 thousandths, see if this fits. It doesn't fit yet, try it again after you've done 40. Do it again after 41, 50, you know, whatever. And also what will affect our depth of cut is our starting outer diameter or inner diameter, depending on what you're doing. Um, let's say I'm threading this. If I made a mistake, if I'm doing our 10 millimeter, and this is, I don't know what this is, it's probably 12. But if it's exactly 10 millimeters, we can trust our 51 thousandths a little more. If it's bigger than, than 10 millimeters, we want to maybe increase our 51 thousandths. If it's a little bit smaller, let's say it's like uh, 0.39 inches instead of 0.394, uh, we want to reduce our 51 thousandths and then test it. It doesn't actually have to be perfect. Um, if you ever try to remove a nut that's maybe like stripped, they're actually really freaking strong. Uh, so even if your thread job 